On this episode of A Soul's Quest podcast, Omar and I are discussing the importance of a symbolic death as it relates to our quest and self-transformation. Stay tuned. You know, you're not looking forward to this topic, are you? I think I have a little bit of issues with this um, yeah. topic in, in both the <laughs> spiritual sense and the physical sense. Yes. Oh, okay. So we're talking about death and resurrection. Yes. Well, but I mean, but think about that. There's death and resurrection. Yeah. That's so time. that's, I'm glad you added the resurrection part in there, mm-hmm. but I, I think that death is a, is a tough topic in and of itself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Sorry. Got to make sure we stay on task <laughs> or on target. Mm-hmm. So I think it's, it's just a difficult topic. It's, hev- it's heavy. Yes. That's what it is. And I think it's heavy in both the spiritual and physical sense. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but in this case, we're going to be talking about it in the spiritual sense. Well, we're going to talk about it in both senses. Okay. You know, and I, I, again, it's like words, spiritual. Like, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Like, what is the... What is the symbolism of a spiritual person? Mm-hmm. You know, it's a person that meditates and does yoga. It's that. What, mm-hmm. See, like, I hesitate to use words like that, and I know that I use it in our hashtags and, and for marketing purposes. But <laughs> So then we need to use it in our episodes. Yeah, but... Because we'll, people we'll, relate we'll, to the spiritual but sense we'll talk or about, aspect. We'll talk about, again, we, we talked about the evolution of ideas. Mm-hmm. You know, I think for me, if I had to re- redefine spirituality it it will encompass both the mind but isn't and the that soul. what but isn't that what spirituality is i don't know not necessarily not for different types of people a lot of people that meditating and just sitting there and just stopping your mind from from talking and from you know for levitating to be able to 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 do certain things that haven't been proven you know to not embrace the noise yeah i mean like there's a lot of Plus, there's a lot of uh, muddling. It's the same question between, like, science and religion. You know, like, what, which one came first? It's like there are aspects of the same, two aspects of the same coin, in my opinion, particularly when it comes to spirituality and when it comes, because you have to think, you know? Mm-hmm. The way that we make sense of the world is by taking information in, processing it and make sense out of whatever right mm-hmm. but 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 how do you make 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 something of divination right of like the i ching how do you make sense of that mm-hmm. how do you make sense of the tarot cards how do you make sense of of the principles of alchemy that were the foundation of science how do you make sense of that back in the day and how do you put a name to that that you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's like it's like a lot of people get turned off by it. So now, are we just talking about using the word spiritual? Yeah, I probably should just scratch it <laughs> and just focus on this. But I just wanted to. Just no, I just I I just think that a lot of people, for all intents and purposes, people relate to spirituality. Mm-hmm. You know, and spirituality encompasses many things. But I think in this in this sense. To talk about death and resurrection, you know, we're talking about it from the spiritual aspect and also the physical. I think when it comes to words like spirituality, like religion, it's like the evolution thing. At one point, those things become the biggest hindrance in your quest for self-evolving. That's why it's he- I'm kind of hesitant to use them. What word would you like me to use I'm, other than spirituality? Just, just whatever you want. Just, we just had this whole discussion for you to tell me to use whatever I want. Yeah. That's messed up. It's interesting. Make you fucking think about it, right? This no. Is, yes, it does. No. It. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah. Everybody wants the cookie cutter shit. Here, do this. One, two, three, four, five, and it's going to work. I feel like you're being a bad guest. I'm the host. Okay. I'm S. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Host S. I stop. So you talk about this. Quote. Host Go ahead. S. I didn't say anything about a quote. Okay. You're being sassy. All right. All right. We're completely lost right now. No, I'm not lost. Are you lost? You went off on a tangent about me saying spirituality. Okay. Hmm. Go ahead. Hmm. Okay. 
All right. So we're going to be talking about death and resurrection. Yeah. And I'm talking about the non-physical aspect as well as the physical aspect. Yeah. How's that? That's perfect. Wow. That's perfect. Okay, great. Perfect. Uh-huh. Okay, so I do have a quote. Uh-huh. I've been doing quotes all this time. I know I say this on every episode, but these yeah. quotes are That's pretty make, cool. They make me feel smart. Good for you. <laughs> all right. This is a quote by Edward and Ed- Edinger. Uh-huh. Edinger. Is that how you say it? Edinger? Okay. Dismemberment, death, death, can be understood psychologically as a transformative process which divides up an original unconscious content for purposes of conscious assimilation. Mm-hmm. So very quickly, succinctly, mm-hmm. what does that mean? What that means is that in order for us to get to know these different archetypes in our subconscious, be able to assimilate them, We need to die to our ideas of who we are as people to really see the benefits and and the good things on those archetypes and then be able to integrate them into our conscious life and live from that balance. So die to our non-physical to be able to integrate them into the physical let's let's t- let's take away like the way f- physical but you you it's you're right so it's to bring things to the conscious conscious right level it's to uh, it's to bring things out that you know what they are mm-hmm. and you know how to apply it in the f- in, in in our lives mm-hmm. right so it's to be able to bring those energies to become aware of them okay to be able to understand how they work within your yourself and your environment and then be able to live from that balance okay. of those. So and in order to do that, you need to die to the idea of this persona that you think that you are. You need to die and evolve. You need to evolve and the process of evolving is death. You know, it's throwing away the old and bring it out the new. Mm-hmm. So you got to die for that, f- from that old weight of thinking and, and, and persona to something new Okay, by bringing those forces up. Okay, that makes sense. Because I, I like the fact that we're, you, because you're the content creator, have built on the last couple of episodes we just talked about revolution and evolution a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and it's like we're building on that. Yeah. So death is not in the 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 literal sense dying but dying to those ideas that society places on us and we we buy into that Mm -hmm. and thus we're not living our authentic selves yeah and part of the hero's journey and part of the you know what we're doing with the soul's quest is confronting this archetype this is this is an archetype that manifests himself in our society but it's both because it happens mentally, but also because it happens physically. And we need to make sense of that. So this is an archetype that that shows up in all religions, in all cultures, because it's an experience. You know? Mm-hmm. So we have to... And it's an experience that's forcing us to... to, I, to, to acknowledge that these things are within us and Mm -hmm. then how can I take the pieces that aren't working and then take the pieces that are working and integrate them. And it forces us to acknowledge number one, the futility of life to say that because what's the point if we're all going to die? It, it, it forces us to think about that. Plus, it forces us to think about, you know, where do we go after? When I think about that, I, I think because so many people are afraid yeah. of death uh-huh. and don't necessarily want to confront that, that that's not... if. 
how do you make people understand what we're talking about for those people who are afraid to talk about death? I'm not going to make anybody, you know, understand anything. It's like, well, I'm not saying make people under. Okay, so that's a bad choice. Of no, words. no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just I'm saying, being sarcastic. Like, I'm being okay. sarcastic. I'm just saying, like, how do we, how do we help mm-hmm. people understand what we mean by that death? If and it's interesting because it, when you say it that way, when you're talking about at the end of the day, we're all going to die. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like. So then what's the point? What's the point? And again, that's a very nihilistic way of looking at life, right? I mean, because there's a lot of people out there. If if life has no purpose and we're all going to die, forget it all. Why, do I, why should I care? Mm-hmm. Why should I bother with anything? You know, there's so many conclusions by actually facing that reality, right? About I'm gonna die is the whole premise of YOLO. You only live once, so be reckless. You know. These are things that that are that manifest themselves in our environment. And we have to make sense of it from the standpoint of what do we do? You know, so that's the that's where this where this question comes from, and that's when that archetype keeps manifesting itself because it doesn't mean that if you're dreaming about death or something happens with death or you get this or that 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 is actually going to happen to you physically. It may happen. It may not happen. It's that's you know we're not fortune tellers, but death may uh, it's going to happen. You don't know when. But the death that we're talking about is that that idea of yes. Thinking about death and understanding the terminality of it should make you question life and should make you question what you are doing with your life. So that's good. I'm glad you said that because I think on the one hand, when you were talking, I was like, well, then if that's the case, then why would people even care about, Mm -hmm. you know, changing, being kind, doing all the things that we're talking about with a soul's quest and, and, Mm -hmm. and going on this journey with us or on this quest with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, what's the point if we're going to die? Yeah. But you're just saying just now are, you're saying that to look at death and to be able to understand that, yes, I'm going to die one day I'm going to die and my life is finite and there uh-huh. is an end point and it can be any day. Mm-hmm. So how do I want to live a life that is meaningful and authentic? Yes. And that's what I'm getting from what exactly. you're saying. And that is, that's the point. And this is what he, this is the death is the catalyst to begin to ask a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. You know, you begin to ask a lot of questions as to why are we doing certain things? Societal wise, why are we pushing so hard? Mm-hmm. What, why what, am I fighting this? Why battle? am I fighting this battle? Why do I feel like this? Like, is there other? Is see, just contemplating death mm-hmm. in that aspect brings you to ask a lot of questions. And when you begin to ask questions, and then you start, you know, unraveling the yarn and peeling the layers of the onion or like two analogies in one, <laughs> you know, you start doing all that stuff. Then you begin to, to really question, okay, what can I do? What do I, what do I want? Mm-hmm. What do I need? Mm-hmm. And how do I want to live? You know? Mm-hmm. So the, it, it's important to question that, mm-hmm. you know, because number one, because of, I don't know what I'm saying number one, but <laughs> but it's also it's also our, our the reason why we fear it, and this is you asked so we know this is the number one fear. We fear it. You said it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh, you. Man. <laughs> we fear death because we don't know its outcome. Yeah, but we then- don't know. People may tell you, and they will fight you truth and nail, but there has been, there, there is no evidence from anyone, like, you know, scientific evidence, to know exactly what happens after you die. It's, right. So that 
is the very point that you're trying to drive here is that if you don't know that, uh-huh. and for example, I could die tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So how do I want to live my, how do I want to go through the rest of this, of this day? Mm-hmm. You know, am I going to live my best life? Am I going to, you know what I mean? Like, I know that's an and extreme they, no, no, example. No, 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 that's a perfect example. It could be that I don't know when I'm going to go. Yes. So am I living the life that I really want to live? Am I living from that that perspective that I'm living my life for me and the way that I want to live it? Mm-hmm. And, or am I doing everything that I can to live that authentic life? Yeah. You know, which is, personally, I think that that's sort of where we are. Mm-hmm on our quest because we have come to a point where we, uh, you know, understand that things have to change for us, but we can talk about that in the next segment because what are like, so what are my next question? What are the types of things that we would want to die or eliminate from our lives when we're going through this process? of? So now let's talk about the things of how we apply that archetype death, right? Yeah. An archetype is an idea Mm -hmm. that happens among us and is to face the unknown, right? Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things that we want to die to, right? Number one is attachments. Mm -hmm. You know, this idea of the persona that we are without incorporating all these different aspects of our subconscious and who we are as people, Mm -hmm. you know, the the yin and yang, the the shadow, Mm -hmm. you know, um, the, the... uh, the death, understanding all, understand, understanding these archetypes, incorporating more over to to, total human, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that knows the, the 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 spectrum of energies within them, and, and living accordingly to that. We have to die to attachments, that persona that has been built by social conditioning and and, and societal roles that have been very important up to this point. I mean, not discarding it, but then taking the parts of it that work and discarding the parts of it that do not work, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, It's creating, it's enhancing, I'm not going to say uh, discarding, but it's enhancing the persona that you could build once you start integrating all these different things. Mm -hmm. So you need to die to that. You need to buy if you if you have relationships in which are not conducive to you. You need to die to those things. Um, uh, mental shackles, you know that that make you that hold you back from those things. These are things you gotta die to, and that process is very painful. Mm-hmm. So, can you give us an example of something that personally that you have gone through that you have had to go through this? process of dying too yeah yeah i mean i i I tell you there's been several two examples and i think one that i mentioned before was in my early late 19s early 20s you know when i had a kind of like a breakdown in which i didn't know who i was I did things because I set goals and i set objectives and i achieved those objectives just based on on just mental capacity and that training that I got when I was when I was growing up, you know, save, go to school, work hard. Those were things that got me, you know, two places. Uh, and but the other part, I wasn't ready to start confronting those things inside of me, mm-hmm. you know. So I had to somewhat die to that infantile. Not infantile to that foundational stuff, mm-hmm. and 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 it felt really horrible going through it. Mm-hmm. So I had to die to that persona that Omar was at that time, and then, and then I had to go and find out, take things from there. But then I had to go and find out more things about me, and had to rediscover. rediscover. It just happened to me recently too. Not to, you know, I just been I've been going through it for for the last few months, dying to this idea of persona or where I should have been in life, what I should have done, and, and all these things, and and then dying to those, and almost to the point that you physically cry because you don't know exactly what you are anymore, mm. and begin afresh, beginning you to go grow from. From there, 
even without you know and and it's like almost at this point is taking all these experiences that i have all to this point bring them together to create something you know something new i mean this is a concept this is an idea this is abstract it's physical because we're doing this but it is an idea of thinking in this way that we're creating Again, it goes back to dying to an old way of thinking, coming up with something new and creating something that that brings meaning. That brings meaning. That brings the intention. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That this is what we don't understand about death. What's the intention afterwards? Right. Or now? Yeah. You know, you could speculate, and I think you know you could come back. And people could argue that, you know, but we 100% haven't experienced that. But we have experienced somebody else dying. So when you um, talk about this, when you talk about your personal experience, one of the things that um, I was thinking about is that when you go through the process, whether you're forced <laughs> mm -hmm. or you do it willingly, because I think there's that aspect of it too. You either are forced to go through the process of dying to these things. Mm -hmm. So you have to go through that, 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 you know, you, you go through the revolution to get to the, go to through the evolution. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're forced or you make a choice to go through this process. And I think what happens for some people is that, at least for myself, is that, you know, you wake up one day or something happens that jolts. It's like a jolt to your system, right? It's like a shock to your system. And you are like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, this ain't working for mm -hmm. me. Like, I, I have, something's got to change. Like, this just happened to me just recently with this situation that I, I had. And I was just like, literally had a breakdown, mm -hmm. crying, and was just like, all over the place um and i came to the to to recognize that this is going to be scary but now i'm going to have to go down this is my fork in the road i can continue down this path and stay unhappy um not advance not be creative mm -hmm. you know suppress the things that i want to do or i can take this path which is the path that is like scary i don't know what's down this path what's the outcome and so is going to be yep. my question is to you is what do what do you say to people that are experiencing or that go through that like they just end up taking does they have the fork in the road and they choose the path that they know even though they're going to be miserable and whatever because they know it and they're not afraid of that because they've already gone through it they're there already or the road that is scary and you don't know what's down that road and i could i could lose my car say it's switching a job or something crazy you know stepping out quitting your job and just like taking taking a leap of faith taking that's faith. scary mm -hmm. right so how do you mitigate those feelings how what's your suggestion so i think there's three types of people you mentioned two of them but i think there's a third okay. one right mm -hmm. so for the first person that that gets that jolt mm -hmm. and decides to do something about it i want to create something i want to do something new right there's a feeling of rejuvenation there's a feeling of life right that that propels you to go through it because mm -hmm. it's going to be challenging you don't know exactly what the outcome is you might create great plans but it may not work out but you go through that some people are adventurous about yes that. <laughs> and there's an adventure to that to do that and yeah. and and that's a even though it's scary and tough you like you take that you take that and and that's something that's real courage mm -hmm. because at the end of the day you know that there's a possibility for complete and order failure mm -hmm. but you're able to try you try to do that at, at the very worst you could always go back to the true and tried method of finding a job and working but mm -hmm. the experience of it all it's great mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um so those type of people i would suggest to to continue to be curious um have a have your have your vision at head but a, a foot planted in the ground mm -hmm. you know and have the balance of understanding your environment and what he needs to be planted on, on the ground but still continue to have that mentality, right? Mm -hmm. The second type of person is the one that feels that, but he has that fear of of taking 
action, mm-hmm. you know, um, or those who want to take that action. Those people are, a, it, it's a matter of questioning, you know, how they want to, how do you want to live? Because let's say you want to just keep doing, you know, we talked about careers is what you're talking about too right now, mm-hmm. right? Just mm-hmm. in, the, in this example. Mm-hmm. But there are careers that if you want to just do that, that's great. You could do that for 30, 40 years and you're okay. Mm-hmm. As long as it's, that is something that fulfills you, that, that, that you understand that that is one aspect of you are of who you are as a person. That's a persona that you play within social. Who you are outside of that, you got to create that. Mm-hmm. I mean, and you have to develop that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, so that's that. Then you have the other person that doesn't care because they have it all. You know, now we're talking all in, in these this three examples. We're talking like physical things, but you could easily say that to things that are, you know, in relationships, in, in, in these things, in that things. You could apply it because within all those spectrums of the roles that we play in society, society, we carry ourselves. So we bring all these energies into the mix, right? But there's a person out there that thinks that nothing's wrong everything's perfect i'm at the top of the pinnacle because this is what society says that i should be and and all that that's the person that i feel bad for because that person holds on to that identity and maybe he helps others and maybe he doesn't maybe they maybe they just become like a like a robot that they don't think about the emotional aspect of themselves and i'm not talking about just physical but they don't think about the emotional aspects because i know everything i have everything under control i know everything i need to know the sadness in that is that they lack the 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 capacity to see that there's so much more Mm -hmm. that they could possibly be doing or experiencing, Mm -hmm. but because they become robotic as a result of the, the matrix. Yeah. Then they just, you become too fixated in that idea of who you are as a person. Yeah. You know, and we all have greater potential. That tightness doesn't let anybody, anything in. And again, it's like, these are examples of different paths. And again, it doesn't mean that you have to go ahead and go and quit your job. I'm not advocating that. Um, If your career is a a career that you chose and you enjoy what you do, by all means, do it. And what we're referring to is that that agony that you're feeling, that that it feels empty and and just death. You have to explore and, that, and you right? and you and when you feel that, you got to explore it. Mm-hmm. And the more that you face it in different aspects of your life, the lighter the load becomes, and yeah. the more accepting you become to the possibilities mm-hmm. of what could happen. Mm-hmm. Well, I think you become more like oh, I wasn't expecting that, but here we go. You go with There's the another. F- you go with the flow, you and go it's not with so. The flow. It's not so much a revolution anymore because it doesn't jolt. The system it's exactly part of the evolution. It's part of the co- conscious part, evolution. Right, you begin right. to consciously right. accept these different changes, exactly, and you begin to consciously realize mm-hmm. all the changes that happen, right. and then you have more gratitude. Would you yeah, say that? Yeah. yeah, you do have more gratitude, and the resurrection, and then this is what so I was just going to get yeah. into. That don't ask the question for me; it's my job. We talked about death and resurrection. We talked a lot about death. So now, just to end this episode, can you just touch on the whole resurrection part? Like, let's talk a little bit Ooh, about can that. Can I get a little dirty in here? Yeah. You only got X amount of minutes, so don't okay. get crazy. So <laughs> there's a symbolism, right, mm-hmm. in mythologies of the death and resurrection mm-hmm. of of heroes. There's a constant There's a constant that, right? Um, so the death let, let's look at the death and the resurrection of Christ right from a metaphor, metaphorical standpoint rather than you know religious standpoint mm-hmm. and the idea is because Christ is the the pinnacle of a hero's journey and and the, the the embodiment of it right you know in a story if you look at it just just from the metaphorical standpoint of the story right he died 
he sacrificed himself willingly. The death was in; it was imminent. He knew it. The night before, he prayed. Is there some other way besides this? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. He prayed, cried. Mm-hmm. Is there some other way besides this? Because this is painful. Right. Mm-hmm. So he he is giving himself, right, to, for a cause, for an idea, a new idea that came out of all this environment. Again, you're dying to the old and you bring it into the new. So he had to, he died, metaphorically speaking, in the story, right. To be resurrected again in in a heavenly spiritual <laughs> figured right, mm-hmm. meaning that he was able to bring together all these opposing forces into one, right, and ascended to heaven mm-hmm. in that. Totality, and as a consequence of that, or of, of that process of that story, the weight of Christianity came about. Mm-hmm. Metaphorically speaking, that's the stuff that needs to happen in you. Not a physical death, but the the idea of a spiritual man is that that you die to your animal instinct, and and what I mean by animal instinct is our our predispositions, our social conditioning, our uh, uh, the marriage of our opposing forces, that you die to all that and you resurrect as the true manifestation of the universe from, the point of, from that point of view of integration. And thus, by, you, by the act of you being and you, you, you're living, you bring forth something new. You see this stuff happening all the time. On the individual level, it's happening really, really fast. On the macro level, macro level is happening fast. And it's drawing a lot of confusion. Because people are dying to all ways of thinking, which is constantly happening. Evolutions happen and, and new generations come in. And as we progress, new ideas come up. And, and, and you see... They're holding on on this side to life tightly, and then they're wanting to let go of it on the other side. It, you see it happening, and there's valid points to the old ways, but there's points that are obsolete, and we can't go willy nilly just implementing everything that's new because chaos is going to ensue. See the gas in the pedal, mm-hmm. right? So Christ resurrecting. That idea of resurrection is that idea of bringing, letting go of all those stuff, bring integrating all, all the 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 opposing forces, and living from that point, and creating from that point. I would say primarily living for that point because what's more powerful than a parents that bring up a a, a child. Or couples, they just say parents, couples, whatever, that the, the take that same energy to bring a child together. A society that understands these polar opposites and is able to find a middle ground. That's, you know, balance, mm-hmm. balance, and then living from there, you know. But right. we sometimes get off balance. And we, but, it, but this happens to people whether or not they have to they recognize it or they're able to articulate it. Mm-hmm. It's whether or not they just really, but it happens. It happens all the time. It happens. Yeah. I think some people recognize it and some people just don't. I I think more people than not recognize it. And I think they they title it as a, a mental breakdown or I lost my shit or, or um, what do you call that? Midlife crisis. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And that's, that's what we're talking about here. So. I, I don't know. I can, and I can't be a judge. I can't be judgmental on it. And I don't know exactly, and I'm just a participant. I've been to a therapist a couple of times. 
and I've ne- I, 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 you know, I said my grievance, uh, stayed in my case, and, and all that stuff, right? But I've never had anyone talk to me in a way to tell me, ah, this is normal. Because what you're doing is that you're transitioning from being a young man to just being an adult right now. Mm-hmm. And now you got to start learning to make different choices and you got to take responsibility. And so even though this happens, there's going to be people in your life that are going to not be okay. You have to either figure out a way to interact or find, or find another solution, right? right? And I, I, don't, I don't know if they talk to people about the, that this is okay. I know that in, that in a lot of institutions that I've been on, the purpose is to, to maintain the status quo, right? And I, I pre- this is just me just thinking out loud. The, the movement of mental health and the movement for, for 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 that is it because we have to figure out a way of coping with this w- way of living, or is it the way of living that we really need to be focusing on to truly change, bring a death about to that, to to bring a change? But it, it's as if the remedies for issues. It's to be able to find ways of dealing with it, either through medicine or through or, or, or coping mm-hmm. with something that mm, could be doing more harm to us. Yeah, we find ways to put band aids on things like this rather than just face it. Yeah, is what. So you're this, so so death. I mean, looking at the uh, uh, like dying, dying to your persona, dying to those internal forces, and and going through that internal journey, which manifests its weight, its weight on the outside, might be a better alternative than you know the the than just talking about it. Mm-hmm. Or masking it, or, or, max, or masking it. I mean, like, what are you doing with it? Mm-hmm. What are you doing with it? It's a great source of creativity. Death, mm-hmm. death, and life go uh, go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. You know, typically the 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 god or the goddesses of death was the the god or the goddesses of life. They were one and the same. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So. Okay. I know we could talk about this forever, but we do need to come to an end. So, but this is good. Hopefully people get a better understanding after the last couple of episodes of what it is that we're trying to talk about here with transformation, evolution, and um, appreciating that process that it can be painful. But at the end of the day, I think that it really does um, add significantly to an individual's life in terms of happiness and fulfillment and balance and harmony and all those things. So, yeah. yeah. So thanks for sharing. If you like this episode, make sure you give us a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, leave us a comment. We really want to hear from you. And also if you want more information about what we're doing, check us out at a soulsquest.com. Mm-hmm.